On the last episode of Peter Does Something Stupid, this magical submarine project winds up and runs away. Unfortunately, we do not know why it ran away and how far it went, but will we find out where the submarine lies? And what other secrets is this lake also holding in hiding? Elastro Pop. Wait, this is the last video. Hang on. We're doing a new video. ROV Recovery Mission. Yeah, we're calling it Mission. We've got to build an ROV because I let the submarine loose and it ran away. So I've got my old ROV from this video. It turns out that one's a piece of junk because I was five years old when I made that mentally. But I have some news for you, viewer. I'm six, so we're gonna build an ROV that a six-year-old could make. How are we gonna do that? Well, we need to design an ROV. For a little context though, why I think my last ROV was so bad is because it is way too analog. I.e., I put a bunch of these relays I found off of Amazon, which either control on or off. We use an ethernet cable, but that was just sitting simple close the circuit, open the circuit to make the thing do the thing. And then we had one line left over for video. It needed like eight lines to do this. But why the lines, you may ask? Well, it turns out radio waves just don't travel underwater. So we need to have a cable, but rather than having eight lines of data communication, we're gonna do something way better. I think I can do it with three because I use my brain a little bit and we are going to use an Arduino. I've done some digging and it turns out I can use the UART line, which is some Adreno noise, like transmission thing. It's called like universal asynchronous receiver transmitter. It sends commands through the lines using only to a ground and a signal line for transmission. We're only transmitting, not receiving anything back from the submersible. So that allows me to use two wires, which is pretty cool versus eight. So we have two wires and we have one left over for video. So only three wires is required to control this ROV, which is a lot less than eight. I did some math. To prototype this, I'm gonna test it first and we're just gonna see if we can even send these signals to the Adreno with some cable. That's a good sign. Camera feed goes through the cable. I can see my sail, so that's good. So that works. Now let's add the video and see if this thing gets interfered with at all. Now the question is, if we make the motor move, is the video signal gonna be happy? So I get to take this jumper, which is to ground, touch it to one of these pins and it hopefully doesn't explode. Nothing happened. Oh, it turns out you have to power the Adreno for something to happen. <laughs> oh yeah, look at those cool lights. Those mean it's working. All right, let's jump this. Hopefully everything works. Hey, look at that. No interference either. From the looks of things, it looks okay so far. Sweet. I think this thing might be made. We just got to assemble the final one. For a fast ROV, from some Adreno coating to a working doohickey, I think we might actually make it. Okay, now we can move on to the next thing. Full tether test. Apparently ChatGPT says I can send UART data, mainly at a slower baud rate through a long transmission line, but not super long. I would have to do something special for a lot longer, but it says 60 feet in theory should be okay. I don't know if that's true or not. So we have to actually just test everything it gives me because I don't fully believe it. We've tested it with the old Adreno. This is the new micro and I also made this kind of cradle doohickey that holds the battery. Hopefully this thing works. But if I do this, it works. And if I do this, it spins the other way. But we are getting closer to testing this. On the design side of things, I'm gonna make it really small because the other one was way too big and this thing is also going to do double duty for inspections on my boat so I don't have to launch the really expensive RV that I have that constantly needs to be clean. This is so much smaller and lighter. So make cool shape, simple and small. My idea here is this pressure bulkhead has a bunch of these little brass pins so we don't have any more silicone or wires passing through it. Mostly this solid interface that we're gonna flow with super glue, epoxy, probably Vaseline. So hopefully this thing is watertight. I think it's gonna work great. I mean, we're only going down like 50 feet so this can't be that bad. All right, we gotta mount this tiny camera in this case, put it inside here because that's a great way to make this waterproof and adjustable. So we can look in all sorts of directions. But first, we gotta drill holes in it. Now we fill this little thing with some epoxy. And... We're almost 
ready to go. I didn't hook up the camera yet. I have one last thing to do. Well, look at the controls. It works great. We got like basically 60 feet of cable. We've got the Arduino. But check it out. So we got this bad boy. We have a dive function that makes the upper motor go up and down. Very self-explanatory. We got a forward button. We got a turn right button. Turn left button. And backup button. Very rudimentary and very simple. But still better than the first one. Because these are brushless motors and the cable is so much thinner. It looks like it works. The full tether works. We've got 60 feet with command and control and the video looks solid. Some requirements for this are like a lot longer run times and better batteries. My last design used crappy brush motors because that's what the relays work with is crappy brush motors and you can do it all analog without any programming. Since we're programming, might as well just make it brushless. So we're going to use some brushless motors and we're going to use some lithium ion cells because these are great ballast for the sub. And now we get to test it because it's all done. It's time for the first dunk test. It's powered on. Predictions. I think it's gonna sink like a rock. <laughs> she sinks like a stone. <laughs> okay, well, is it leaking? I don't see any leaks yet, but this isn't really gonna tell me anything because it's only in a few feet of water. It's kind of like a bad design, I think. The, I, the top ends up being like more heavy. All right, well, let's see if it even works. Now we have the box and we have no video. Oh, you have to plug it in for it to work. I'm so smart. There we go. Oh yeah, we look at that video. Oh, that works. Okay, we can come up. Oh, we go forward. Sweet, that works. Spin around. Go around. Yeah, boy, look at it go. <laughs> That's exactly what you want your RV to do. <laughs> okay, we got some foam glued on. I'm just guesstimating the amount of buoyancy that we need. got lines in it now that's weird I wasn't doing that earlier oh that must be like the signal that's crazy looking look at those lines this is really only using a fraction of the power that this thing has i have the speed control really tuned down it's only like outputting maybe in forward and backwards like 200 microseconds like 1500 microseconds is the middle for most forward and backward speed controllers and servos and things like that in general so we're only adding 200 microseconds in either direction so it can go up to 1700 or 1300 when in reality, I should be able to go to 1,000 versus 2,000 to get that maximum movement. For all of you know RC, that's just more nerd speed. Okay, that works. It works on this tub of water. That's no problem. But the real test is going to be the pressure test. What is going on? Did you release the brake? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, it's time for the actual test. If water gets in this ROV, I'm pretty sure these ESCs are going to catch on fire because some, for some reason the brushless ESCs and their MOSFETs really hate water. So if a single drop of water gets on it, it's probably going to burst into flames underwater and then kill itself. I'm going to not power on the ROV and sink it to the bottom. Oh boy, look at it go. Alright, let's leave it there for quite a few minutes. Okay, it's been like two or three minutes. Let's pull it up. Alright. It's totally dry. Would you look at that? Awesome, my 3D printed crap actually works. Hey, would you look at that? Leak proof at 40 feet. Okay, let's power this thing on and send it down and see what we can see. Now, we can actually do the lake test that we're currently sitting in, and we're gonna do our first scan. And it's working great. This is pretty flawless. It moves around and I can look around. But there's a slight issue. So we looked around, but how are we going to search for this thing? Fortunately, I left the GPS marker when I immediately lost track of it. So we're gonna look there first. Now here's the problem. That leads to some guessing because when I lost track of the sub, it was like 10 feet underwater and moving. That's a problem because we don't know where it moved to. So let's do some more guessing and just look around here. Or look around there. Okay, this isn't quite working out. I think we need to do some sort of scanning pattern, but rather than try to use the ROV to drive itself around the lake, which it kind of sucks at driving a straight line over a long distance, Let's modify it for scanning. Well, we have this step of the project done. As you can imagine, a lot of these projects have a lot of steps. That's why I'm using Odoo to help streamline this process. Odoo is an all-in-one management software that provides users with a ton of tools for running your business, including accounting, invoicing, project management, inventory management, website creation, and much more.
You can even get one app for free with unlimited hosting and support. I've been using this one for this build, which is the project app. It's just like my whiteboard diagrams and allows me to populate the board and get a clear view of the steps and processes on any project that I'm working on. You can even break more complicated projects down to subtasks to keep things on track and make your deadlines. You can even collaborate in real time and share the project with an external or internal team. It's been helpful for allowing me to collaborate with Dave, my editor, and make sure I get all these sick shots that you like so much that make these videos worth watching. Definitely check out the app for a free app of your choosing, or you can get all the apps for $24.90 a month. Check Odoo out in the link down below and help manage your business or projects today. Let's go back to recover this submarine. So I made this apparatus for kite scanning, I guess. It basically has this big tail, it weather vanes to the prevalent direction you're moving in, so we're gonna drag this thing into water, and it's kind of just like looking wherever I move the kayak. So spooky down there. It's like a barren wasteland of dead things and snag points. It's so hard to see anything down there. It's like right now I'm just drifting with the wind, and it looks like this green mush. Another thing I'm kind of noticing is when you're really deep down there, it's kind of hard to see. I think something changes with like the amount of light getting to the bottom of the lake, obviously because there's a lot of water overhead. So it makes it really hard to see things. So that's not quite working out either. But I found this cool technology that the fishing guys use, which is the side scan sonar. Unfortunately, it's very expensive. So I'm gonna do what any good government installation would do. Let's spend your money. And in this case, I'm spending my money. Let's go buy the expensive fish finding sonar thing. <laughs> You know, this actually is a good battery compartment. It fits like perfectly in there. <laughs> so we got the oldest trolling motor I could find from 20 years ago. We got the fancy transducer with side scan. And we got some marine electronics that are worth more than both these kayaks combined. We're either gonna get a yes or no that it's down there, or I can just give up. Because if it's not down there, that thing will show me if it's down there. Because I've seen the side scan imaging stuff, and that stuff is a large object to find. So it's either gonna show up, and we can confirm it's down there, or we can confirm it's not down there, and I can stop wasting time. It's working. Hunting submarines is serious business. We got kayaks ghetto strapped together. Got my doohickey to find it. Side view, let's see what's down there. All right, this thing's gotta be foolproof. So we are gonna use a sonar. It's really cool because it can allow me to look at the whole bottom. I can really determine if there's a submarine down there. Okay, well, I have mixed thoughts about how this is going. I mean, like, we're, we're looking around for it, but we don't see anything. I mean, the only thing I see is this tree and maybe this big rock. I know there's a lot more underwater than this. Well, let's try testing it with the actual submarine that we have that we haven't lost yet. And then we'll see what it looks like on the sonar so I can actually tell what we're supposed to look at. Because it's plastic, and I don't know if plastic's gonna show up very well on this thing. <laughs> That's a big shape on the sonar. Hey, look, it shows up when it's going down, but I'm noticing something. The moment it kind of touches the bottom, it just vanishes. We passed around this part of this lake like four or five times and I cannot make out my submarine at all. Did I really just waste all this money on this sonar that doesn't work at all for this project? All right, well, let's try this recovery thing. Um, let's drop the stick because I want, I want to see. Okay, so sonar looks like it might be kind of a bust for this. So that is going to do us no good, and that actually doesn't give me confidence because for this mission to work, we have to know if there's a submarine down there. Sonar, that's out. All right, let's do more scanning, but this time with the GoPro. It also turns out I got a new raft. See, I got this thing for like 20 bucks at an online auction. It's definitely more useful than that stupid sonar. So let's use this thing to do our searching. It is day 100 of the insanity that is trying to find a plastic $100 worth of parts submarine. We have the inflatable doohickey that I won at an online auction for $25, and I have all the other associated parts strapped to it. We are going to find that sub one way or another.
Ah, uh, there he is, the turtle. He's checking me out, yeah. He's like, what the heck is this thing? <laughs> Look at this turtle. <laughs> We were trudging along the bottom and we found something else. <laughs> it appears we're stuck on something. This looks like to be the underwater cable of doom. The RV looks to be wrapped around its neck between like the, the main camera and the GoPro. Oh boy, I don't wanna shake this too much because like the GoPro is just held on by the clamps. We could lose the GoPro now, great, that's gonna be awesome. This project's gonna get even more expensive. All right, sweet, I got this rope looped around here and pulling this up. <laughs> oh, it's a boat anchor. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, I think this is worth like 20 bucks at Walmart. You know, that totally offsets the cost of the really expensive fish finder. Oh, well, back to searching. No way, we found it. Drop the anchor. Okay, we're holding position. Okay, RV, go. Okay, we're tracking, we're following the descent line. Oh, wait a second. This is the wrong submarine. I see it. I see it. Okay, I got the hook. Okay, let's move it. Okay, we're hooked up. All right, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up by the tether. The tether's doing its job. It's just strong enough for this. And... Wait a second. This submarine's white. This is the first submarine. See, that was a hypothetical. That's how this recovery would have looked if we were to actually find the submarine. But unfortunately, before we could look in this new area, which we kind of pinpointed through looking at the drone footage, we got ran off by the water police because apparently that's supposed to register this new raft. All right, it looks like we're gonna have to call this thing pretty soon. I don't know what happened to the sub. Like, I really don't have a confirmation whether or not that it went down deeper. We maybe left too soon, like within an hour and the sub floated up and it actually got found. I don't know if it actually is lost. Maybe it still is down there. Maybe it actually did go underneath and it's sitting on the bottom somewhere. It could have floated up and got found by someone else. It could also just be found by now. Maybe someone fished it out of the pond because maybe it turned around because it actually looked like it was actually going off a little bit of an angle now that I look at the footage. So it may have actually turned and parked somewhere on the beach and some guy cast out to it and reeled it in. So we could be looking for nothing. So unfortunately, we did not quite accomplish our task of finding my sick, awesome submarine. But we made a cool RV that looks like an eight-year-old designed it versus a five-year-old who designed the first one. And we're gonna use that for all sorts of future projects and we need to recover things in the water. Although we need to work on the scanning game. Maybe I build a more powerful RV and we just come back and look later for the submarine. Do I really spend more money on this project? This is stupid. I want to build something else. Hey, check out this cool airplane we made out of cardboard. I think I'm going to get in this airplane and fly this cardboard airplane. You guys have to tune in next week for this video. Look what else I found. Hey, Dave, catch. 